today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that everybody has had a great week and I hope you're all looking forward to a fantastic weekend. Welcome Fuong. Hi Silviana. Chayani, we have uh, some new members. That's great. Silviana, good to meet you as well. Carolina, welcome our chat moderator. Students, this is a members chat class. Everybody is welcome to watch. There's lots of learning for the IELTS reading in this class. And we're reading about an interesting topic, why some people have uh, red hair. Um, IELTS uh, reading, whether it's academic or general, they have lots of different topics to choose from. They always seem to come up with some original ideas for the reading topics. So uh, be ready for just about any topic. Uh, we will have um, a subscribers chat class coming up after this class in about two hours. That will be listening. Uh, we will be uh, practicing for listening parts one and two using our websites. The materials for this class are also from our academic IELTS website. To get all of our exams, uh, audio materials, and support materials that we use for these uh, live lessons, definitely check out aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com. That's our academic IELTS website. Uh, for general IELTS, for general IELTS me reading materials, it's gieltshelp.com. Uh, both of those websites have tons and tons of materials to help you pass the IELTS. Academic uh, website looks like this with the bl blue background. You can click this big uh, red button there just above my head. It's a one-time payment um, for lifetime access uh, and you get all the materials for these live classes. We are an IDP affiliate. Uh, we're a British uh, Council partner. We're an IELTS test registration uh, center. I'm a certified British Council agent. So you are in excellent hands with us. General IELTS, it's the green background, gieltshelp.com reading section and uh, task one of the writing is quite different for general IELTS. So we separate uh, students into these two. We don't mix them, it makes sense. Uh, this is gieltshelp.com. Click that big red button there to join the premium package and you are good to go. Uh, we have apps, of course, that uh, uh, are very useful um, to connect with the websites. Uh, check that out. Um, the apps are Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help. On the website, not on the app, but on the website, you can use this discount code, HISTORY99, for a 10% discount. And uh, you can click the link in this class's description um, to use that discount. So that's the easiest way. If you have questions about IELTS reading or about other parts of the IELTS or the English language, uh, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. All right, students, uh, classes again, we've got uh, reading listening for you today and then um, tomorrow uh, we have speaking uh, part two and speaking part three, so make sure you join for that, practice your speaking, and uh, then um, always check out new videos. We'll have a new video coming out for you um, within the next 24 hours. Here's the one from last week. If you're following all of the live classes, and you're checking out all the new videos that we're putting on YouTube and of course we're putting them on the websites as well um, and you're following the materials on the website, you will not only improve your English but you will greatly improve your communication skills uh, for school, for work, for life and you're going to see some fantastic benefits and changes um, where people will understand you better People will do what you ask them more. You will achieve your goals faster. And you'll just have an overall uh, better life satisfaction. Just remember, humans are social beings. And uh, what connects, what links us all is the way that we communicate with each other. And that's, of course, the global language English and, of course, in your own language as well. So 
All right. Joao, nice. I was, I was wondering if somebody would make a mention of that. Joao says, I uh, loved the thumbnail of the stream. Yeah, I put a little bit of red cartoony hair on myself. I thought that would be kind of funny and fun at the same time. All right, um, so let's uh, jump to um, our uh, reading for the day. Here it is. Um, so the uh, topic here is... Uh, why do some people have red hair? Now, when you see the title in IELTS, always read it, okay? I think there's still some people who just kind of skip the title of the passage. It's a bad idea um, because the title is, I mean, it's important. It's its uh, basically um, the ultimate summary of the reading, right? So why do... Some people have red hair. And this title in particular, it's a question. Uh, and it's probably because it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it wants the reader to think about the answers. It's a bit provocative. It's like, do you know why people have red hair? Um, Carolina thought that was pretty funny. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I would look like with red hair. I kind of, I mean, I think I have some of that going on in me anyway. Like if you actually saw my hair um, in the sunlight, it's got a bit of a, a little bit of a brownish reddish tint. It looks black on the, or darker on the video, but, uh, but it's, it's not, I've got a kind of like a medium brown, the reddish tint. Okay. Uh, so why do people like, what do you think? Um, and when you think about the answer, it helps your brain to understand the reading, okay? Especially in the academic. So, Chen, Amra, Silviana, our latest and greatest member. <laughs> why Why do you think people have red hair? Raquea, what do you think? Harpreet says to look attractive. <laughs> Uh, maybe okay so <laughs> Harpreet well, why not right so according to Harpreet the answer is uh, so that they look attractive yeah I mean evolution that's got to be a part of it right um, Joao says I think it has to do with genetics um, it's likely to do with genetics yeah, so genes, genetics, right? It's a good word to know. Heredity, Chayani, very good. Genetics, um, also you can think about it like heredity. Heredity is what we inherit. From parents' genes. Yeah. Okay, sure. All right. Um, but why would the parents have it? So always think one step further. And this is the trick, right? Because I think in some other IELTS courses, um, the teachers say this as well, like try to answer the title, try to think about the title, try to predict, right? The trick to um, understand the passage even more, okay, or better, is to think one step further. Should have made the think big too. Think one step further. Think beyond the other person. Think one step further. Um, What do I mean by that, right? Like, what do you mean? What do you mean think one step further? Um, I mean, think deep, go deep. Okay, so think deep. Uh, think one step further. Like. Here, I would say uh, another question. Why do their parents have red hair? And why do their parents have red hair? So um, what I'm basically saying here, right, is uh, what is the reason for this gene? Okay. Think about your science class. So understanding science and understanding basic science, okay? And this is kind of a, it's a good note here. So understanding 
and remembering high school science class uh, for academic IELTS reading is very good. Okay, there's a lot of that content is connected to it, like genetics, right? When you're studying genetics. Uh, Raquia says because of gene mutation, right, Raquia? And I think Chen um, has taken it one step further. Chen says maybe it has something to do with adaptation for climate. Yeah, Chen, I like it. Good on you, Chen. You're you're thinking one step further. It is. <clears throat> it is some kind of adaptive advantage, maybe for climate. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> sorry. I have a frog in my throat. Just, all right, all these flus and bugs going around. Um, Right, so when we adapt, when we mutate, right, we mutate for some reason. It's not just by accident. So it's not by accident that we have uh, different uh, skin pigments and hair colors and eye colors and eye shapes and eyelids and all kinds of differences among humans living in different parts of the world. It's not by accident. It's not like, oh, hey, I woke up one day and uh, I had uh, blue eyes. Ooh, magical. No, there's a reason, right? Nature doesn't truly have accidents, not in the long run anyway, okay? So it's some kind of adv adaptive advantage, maybe for climate. <clears throat> well, visualize, right? So good prediction, everyone, in the aisles doesn't just mean you read the title and you think of something really quick. Um, it actually means like using your critical thinking, right? So pe some people have red hair, why do they have red hair? They get it from their parents, okay? It's a gene. It's a part of their um, genotype, their phenotype. Uh, they uh, inherit it. Um, but why? Why would they have that? Well, maybe it has something to do with climate. Visualize. So when you visualize, where do you see people with red hair? Okay, this is a tip. All right, so visualize. <clears throat> where do you see people with red hair? Where do they live traditionally? Amra, very good. Amra says, in the north. Okay, and what's in the north? Yeah, in the north parts of Europe, Scandinavian countries, cold places. <laughs> Raquia says, in the mountains. They're mountain people, Raquia. People who have red hair are mountain people. Um, it's kind of true, Raquia. I'm poking fun, but it's kind of true. You're kind of right, okay? Uh, Silviana says, Scotland, right. And what's the weather like in Scotland and in the Scandinavian countries, members? What's the weather like? Well, if you're doing lots of critical thinking, and lots of visualization, right? And you're being a scientist. Chen says maybe they are with the Yetis. Um, then you realize they live in places that are cold, rainy, and cloudy. So maybe red hair has something to do with sunlight. Dun, 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 right? And you may think it impossible to get to this uh, conclusion or this uh, thought, but, uh, but it's not, okay? It's not. Um, you also think of other um, kinds of ideas that connect with this, right? And you probably realize that, oh yeah, uh, people, with red hair tend to have very pale skin or very fair skin. We also say uh, fair or pale skin. And 
get sunburned very easily. Right? So before you start reading, students, see it. Okay, visualize it. Think about it critically. Spend, especially if the reading seems very difficult, spend a half a minute um, thinking about this because it's going to help you understand the passage. It's going to help you to get more answers correct on your IELTS, okay? So don't just jump right into the reading, okay? Now, this is... Um, the second reading passage from our second exam book. So uh, let's read this. Let's uh, let's listen to uh, an English reader and let's read it and then we'll read it together. Okay, and then we'll answer some questions, members. So we're going to do this passage together. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to show you how this works. So uh, let's hop over to the website we'll jump right in this is the academic website again you can click this big uh, red button here to join the premium IELTS package for those of you who are watching you can click the link in the video description to get the premium package okay and then when you're in your my student account um, you click on the audio CDs and this is CD4 because it's our fourth exam and um, it is reading passage two, so it's going to be track six. Uh, here we go, everybody. Let's read and read the passage together. Um, read it aloud if you can. So actually read loudly uh, with this reader if you can, okay? Here we go. Why do some people have red hair? Red hair is an exceedingly rare trait, especially in areas of the world such as Asia, Africa, and South America. In Western Europe, however, here, red me, hair is relatively common. Let me start common. that again for you. So we're In some countries, okay, such as in South America, eatingly, eatingly. why do some people have red hair? Red hair is an exceedingly rare trait, especially in areas of the world such as Asia, Africa, and South America. In Western Europe, however, red hair is relatively common. In some countries, such as Scotland, Red hair is more common than blonde hair. Additionally, countries with historical immigration from Western Europe, such as the United States and Canada, also show high incidences of red hair. Red hair has been around for thousands of years, if not far longer. There are ancient Greek accounts of redheads and even ancient Egyptian ones. The story of why people have red hair is interesting and has to do with genetics, evolution and geography. The gene for red hair is what is known as a recessive gene, which means that the gene can only be passed down to the next generation if both parents possess the gene. And even then, the probability is only 25%. But it is important to note that not only redheads carry the gene for red-headedness, rather, in some countries, up to 40% of the population carries the gene. This accounts for the birth of a red-headed child to non-red-headed parents. The parents may not be red-headed themselves, but they carry the gene. And if their ancestry was to be analysed, there would surely be redheads up and down their family tree. The specific gene for red hair is called the Milano Cortin 1 receptor, MC1R, and was discovered in 1995 by Professor Jonathan Rees at the University of Edinburgh. This gene is responsible for red hair, along with the other tertiary attributes associated with red hair pale skin and myriad freckles, for example. But why did people ever have red hair in the first place? The answer, some scientists think, has to do with evolution and geography. The places where red hair is relatively common, Northern Europe and Western Europe, have lower sunshine levels than other parts of the world. This lack of sunshine resulted in a lack of vitamin D production in its inhabitants, 
exposure to the sun being humans' main source of the nutrient, which can result in rickets, a condition which can lead to the deformity of bones. One of the side effects of the MC1R gene is that redheads more easily absorb vitamin D due to the low amounts of eumelanin in their bodies. On one hand, this results in a particular predisposition to sunburn. However, it also allows redheads to avoid rickets even when underexposed to the sun. Redheads also have a number of other curious attributes that are associated with the MC1R gene. First, they have a higher tolerance for pain than non-redheads. Studies have shown that redheads require up to 20% more anaesthesia for sedation than non-redheads. Second, redheads are more sensitive to cold temperatures. This is especially curious because redheadedness originally developed as an adaptation for cold, sun-poor environments. Evolution is not perfect, and it may be the case that maladaptation to cold temperatures is the price redheads pay for adaptation to low levels of sunlight. Third, redheads bruise more easily than non-redheads. There does not seem to be any evolutionary reason for such a trait, though it certainly does contribute to the negative stereotype of redheads as less physically capable than non-redheads. This is not the only negative stereotype that has cursed redheads throughout the centuries. At times in history, redheads have been thought to be witches, evil, unclean and soulless. Today, these stereotypes have thankfully given way to more cheery stereotypes of redheads as fun and quirky individuals. In recent years, a perception has been created that redheads are dying out and will eventually become extinct as a genetic category. This is patently false. Red hair, as a recessive gene, has the ability to skip generations and return in full force. Red hair has been around for thousands of years, perhaps as many as a hundred thousand years, and there are no signs of its forthcoming extinction. While redheads may make up a shrinking percentage of the world's population due to higher growth among non-European populations, the redhead gene is here to stay. All right, the aesthetic everyone. merit of abstract art. So that is the reading. Um, students, especially those of you who do have access to the premium IELTS uh, package, uh, make sure you use these um, reading audios. Uh, they're all found in your audio CD sections for all of the uh, six available exams. So you have uh, 18 of them, okay? Make sure to use them. Amra says, interesting passage. Romelia says, I have. Good, Romelia, that's fantastic. Um, members, we're going to read this together now and just practice our reading, discuss uh, the content of each paragraph briefly. Um, I love doing this with you. So uh, when you're in your My Student account here, after you logged in, uh, please click on the student partner speaking. That's just right there above my head. And then volunteer to read. So Silviana, Get in there, volunteer, Lamia, Chayani, Chen. We've got lots and lots of members with us today, so I want to see lots of volunteers. Um, just read. Reading is so important, especially reading aloud. Not many people do it, or not enough anyway. Um, but it's really important for pronunciation, practice, grammar, fluency. All right. Uh, so again, go to the website, log in, and then click on Student Partner Speaking, and uh, there you are. And then just um, send me, uh, Silviana, I see you in there too. Um, so uh, Raquea, it's very nice, member and a premium student. So I want you to all to volunteer and read. Uh, Raquea, let's start with you. You're there, you're ready to go, it seems like. Romelia, you as well, fantastic. Yes, you can. Thank you for sending me the message, Raquea. Here we go.
Hello. Hi, Raquea. How is your day? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing all right. Thanks for asking. I'm doing all right. Um, okay, Raquea, we'll get right into it. So, are okay. you ready to read? Yes, I am. Okay, here we go. So, I'm going to read the title Why Do Some People Have Red Hair? And you can start from red hair is an exceedingly rare trait as soon as you see it on the screen. Yes, okay. Red hair is an exceedingly rare trait, especially in areas of the world such as Asia, Africa, and South America. In Western Europe, however, red hair is relatively common. In some countries such as Scotland, red hair is more common than blonde hair. Additionally, countries with historical immigration from Western Europe, such as the United States and Canada, also show high incidences of red hair. Red hair has been around for thousands of years, if not far longer. There are ancient Greek accounts of red hairs and even ancient Egyptians once. The story of why people have red hair is interesting and has to do with genetics, evolution, and geography. That is fantastic reading. If you can read that fast, you will have no problem getting a good score, as long as you understand what Thank you're you. reading. Um, Raquea, so um, yeah. <clears throat> what is this introductory paragraph about? So this is the introduction. What is it telling us? What's the main point here? I think it is about uh, red hair region where it is found yeah i agree with you it's mostly telling us where it's common where it's not common not so common in asia but found in uh, yeah. places like scotland western europe and places where people went to from western europe like united states canada right okay yes. um Raquia, another very important question and everybody must ask this question when you're doing the reading passages in the aisles this is very important okay yeah. what is this yes. question Raquia? what what sentence let me ask you this a little bit differently what mm -hmm. sentence do we have to pay special attention to in the introduction there's a very special in the, sentence. In the last, in the last, the story of why people have red hair is interesting and has to do with genetics, evolution, and geography. That's right. What is that sentence called in writing? It's called thesis sentence. That's right. You are, you are, you're my helper today. You're, you're it. Um, that's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. That's your thesis statement. Yeah, very good. You identified that. Yes. Can you tell why it's super important to um, pay very special or extra attention to that thesis statement? Because uh, uh, we are going to discuss these points in the body paragraph. Exactly. In this order, most likely, right? So probably the author yeah. will talk about genetics first. Genetics, then, yeah. Then evolution. Evolution mm -hmm. and then geography. And then and geography. Then geography. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, right? So if you have, you know, when you're looking at the questions after, you know that that's the organization of the essay, right? Brilliant, yes, so smart, yes. so smart. Yes, yes. Super helpful, you're doing a great job today. Thank you. You Thank answered you. every question I had, Raquea. That was brilliant. Thank you so much for reading the introduction. Okay, you are most welcome, sir. <laughs> Thank you, I'm have busy. a You too, bye Raquea. Thumbs up for Raquea. That was fantastic. That was like she was my uh, teacher assistant there. That was great. Give her a thumbs up. Okay, uh, Romelia, I think you were second. So let's give you a shot at the next paragraph. Are you ready? All right. And for all of our viewers, join our membership on YouTube. Get premium access to our websites. Then you'll have lots of fun like this. Uh, Romelia, good, you're ready. All right, here we go. Hi, Romelia. Hi. How are you on this lovely Friday uh, afternoon, I guess it's for you? Evening. Yeah, almost. the weekend upcoming. Pretty well, why not? 
<laughs> sure. All right, let's do this. So you should see the next paragraph on your screen, starting with the gene uh, for red yeah, hair. Yeah, if you can uh, put it uh, up. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. You'll see it as soon as you're okay. ready. Okay. Okay. May I may I start reading? Mm -hmm. Yes, please do. The gene for red hair is what is known as a recessive gene, which means that the gene can only be passed down to the next generation if both parents possess the gene. And even the probability, it's only 25%. But it's important to note that not only red hair carry the gene for red headness. Rather, in some countries, up to 40% of the population carries the gene. This accounts for the birth of red-headed child to non-red-headed parents. The parents may not have red-headed themselves. But they carry the gene, and if their ancestry was to be analyzed, there, uh, there would surely be red head up and down their family tree. <laughs> Good, Romelia. You know, Romelia, that was fantastic. I'll tell you why. Um, so I can tell that you're pushing yourself to read faster than possible. And um, that's good practice. Um, we have a, uh, a lesson in the course on the website, which is called Power Reading. And one of the steps in Power Reading is to push yourself to read faster than possible because that way you increase your reading speed. So you don't necessarily pay attention to uh, understanding at that point, but you're just really focusing on building speed. Like in this next paragraph, here, the specific gene writers called Miller had one receptor and was discovered in '95 by Jonathan Reese at the University yeah, of Yeah, you know East why? Because I'm so passionate it's... about pronunciation, British pronunciation, and that's why I want to sound very fluent. Mm hmm. So it's good. It's good to force speed. It's good to force speed. That's great. Okay, now let's see how much you understood. So, what was this? <laughs> um, what was this paragraph mostly about? About the gen involved in the the process of. Yeah, the gene, right? Which is no surprise because um, as Raquea uh, elegantly said, the author will talk about genetics according to the thesis statement. And sure enough, the author does. So um, uh, it's about the gene. And what is interesting about this gene for redheads? What is What do we find out in this paragraph about this? That uh, can, uh, can pass only one generation further. Um, not quite. Uh, for, um, that it's a recessive uh, it, it's gene. It's found in another situation, not only for uh, red rednesses. Yeah. Yeah. What's important to know about this gene for red hair yeah. is that it's recessive, right? It's a recessive gene. Uh, I know. Meaning, I studied genetics. <laughs> I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. And in in that case, can you tell us what is the opposite of the recessive gene, or what is the counterpart of the recessive gene? <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know how to, to tell in English and I don't know how to... <laughs> well, here is a Do learning dominant, opportunity. Yeah, a dominant that's right. Gene. It is. See, you do know. <laughs> um, and, you know, this brings me to another important point. Students, don't be so quick to say, I don't know, okay? Um, our, <laughs> our brain knows yeah, a I, lot I was in doubt about my English, not about my <laughs> biology, genetics. Right. <laughs> and But you said, I don't know, and then you realize, oh, it's called a dominant gene. So you did know, okay? Um, you do know. A lot of times you know much more than you think you know. So um, that's another interesting part of our brain as we sometimes doubt ourselves, but uh, there's no need. So uh, yeah, recessive gene and then the opposite is the dominant gene. Dominant genes have a 75% chance of being passed on. Recessive genes have a 25%. I shouldn't say passed on. We pass them all on, but we have what's called the phenotype. The phenotype are the genes that we express, that we show in our physical uh, behavioral characters and um, dominant genes have 75% chance of being shown in the phenotype. Recessive genes have a 25% chance. So, okay, Romelia, I think you got it. That's kind of, you know, um, the most important part here. Um, it's a gene, it's recessive, it goes on and on, but it's not a strong one. It doesn't always show itself, right? Mm. So that's the key here. All right, Romelia. Keep practicing. Check out. Have you seen that uh, part of the course in the uh, your premium course called Power Reading? Not yet. Okay. I I have to check it. <laughs> yeah, check the reading section. It's um, 
it's here in the full online course. And if you go to the reading section here, um, I think it's gonna be uh, either maybe B or C, and it's gonna be called Power Reading. It teaches you how to read building your fluency and building your uh, comprehension and then putting the two together. It's a really cool um, exercise that was created by psychologists. I didn't invent it, but uh, it works very, very well. So check that out, okay? Okay. All right, Romelia, thank you. Uh, have uh, Continue to have a great Friday and uh, we'll talk more in a bit, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, bye, Romelia. All right, um, Chayani, you are here, you are ready. Are you ready? We will answer questions as well, students, but of course, in order to answer questions, you have to understand the passage for all of you watching. Uh, in order to do a good job on IELTS, get a band seven, get a band eight, uh, you need to understand at least 60% of what you're reading, okay? If you don't understand at least 60%, you're gonna be in trouble, all right? Okay. Thanks for all the thumbs up, everybody. That's fantastic. Chayani, here we go. Okay. Thanks for all the thumbs up, everybody. That's fantastic. Hello, sir. Hi, Chayani. Yeah. How are you? How are you, sir? I am um, doing all right. How are you? I'm pretty well. Thank you. Pretty well is kind of strange English, Chayani. Let's try that, try that again. I'm, I'm quite well. Um... I'm quite well. Quite well. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. Okay, um, Chayani, here we go. Are you ready? You should see the next paragraph coming up here, starting with the specific gene. Okay, I'm ready. Go for it. The specific gene for red hair is called the melacortin 1 receptor, MC1R, and was discovered in 1995 by Professor Jonathan Rees at the University of Edinburgh. This gene is, respons is responsible for red hair, along with other territory attributes associated with red hair, pale skin, and mild freckles, for example. But why did people ever have red hair in the first place? The answer, some scientists think, has to do with evolution and geography, the places where red hair is relatively common. Northern Europe and Western Europe have lower sunshine levels than other parts of the world. This lack of sunshine resulted in a lack of vitamin D production in in its inhabitant, exposure to the sun being human's main source of the nutrient, which can result in crickets, a condition which can lead to the deformity of bones. One of the side effects of the MC1R gene is red has more easily absorbed vitamin D due to low amounts of human lanine in their bodies. On one hand, this results in a particular predisposition to sunburn. However, it also allows red hats to avoid rickets, even when underexposed to sun. Lovely. That was really good. That was really fast. Um, you don't actually need to read that fast in the aisle. It's okay. You can read a little bit slower. Just make sure you understand a lot of what you're reading. But for practice and practicing at home, that's really smart. And by the way, everybody, when you get to university or if you're planning to go to school, especially masters um, in Canada, US, UK, Australia, you do need to read as fast as Chayani just read when you're doing your studies. Otherwise, you'll never be able to read all the materials that you have to read. Okay, um, so yeah. you should work on that. That was really nice, fast reading. A um, couple of uh, good points, Chayani. I love how you didn't get stuck on some tricky words. You just kind of read them however and then kept reading. Uh, like this one here, um, the word tertiary. Okay, can you read that for me? Tertiary. Tertiary. Yeah, it's a tricky one. It's like rrr, rrr, rrr. tertiary, <laughs> right? <laughs> Do you know what that word means, tertiary? Um, it's kind of like strange for the biology word. It's uh, it's not a biology word. Um, it's a, a number. It's a sequencing word. S uh, the predecessor to it is secondary. Okay, so it's like firstly, secondary, 
tertiary. So it's basically like first, second, third. Tertiary means the third attribute. So the third level of attributes associated with red hair include pale skin. So it's like other attributes, right? But it's not that important of a word and it's not going to be an answer to any questions, I don't think. Um, so uh, sometimes people think when they read a really tricky word, it's going to be an answer. But no, in this case, it's just a, a word that they're using. Um, so what was this paragraph about? I think this is talk about the discovery of the red hat and where the place mostly um, the foreign people found the red headed person. Mm, I would disagree with you. So if we were sitting and reading this together, I would say, no, Chayani, I don't agree with you. I agree that, okay, it talks about the specific gene, the M the uh, melanocortin-1 receptor, which they abbreviate to the MC1R. So yes, <clears throat> they do talk about that, but there's some other really important information here. What is it? It's kind of found in, the, in this uh, second half of the uh, paragraph here. There's some really key information to this passage and that will most likely be uh, parts of the questions as well and the answers. So take a look at that. What do you think it is? Mm, the side effect of the redheads? Not okay. just the side effects, but something other than that, something that's really important. And um, Domenico, uh, you just joined, Silviana, Fuang, you can answer in the chat as well, Tan. So these questions aren't just for the readers. I'm also looking at the chat to see who else uh, understood the uh, paragraph. And um, yeah, Romelia says primary, secondary, tertiary. Yes, thank you, Romelia. It's not first, it's primary, you're right. Oh, I got one. I think it was the uh, list of vitamin D. Okay, now you're on track. So um, what happens when um, we don't have enough vitamin D? Um, like... It's right there. I think I'm getting... It's right there right there and this one repeats a couple of times i saw it uh, here as well okay so you should be able to see them i'm putting little boxes around the keywords there okay deformity of wounds yeah we get a very very terrible uh, sickness called rickets and uh, our bones deform and uh, of course that would lead to death in many cases as well so vitamin D is extremely important. So this paragraph, okay, is uh, telling us the reason for this gene. So um, who was it? Um, Harpreet, I think, that said uh, red-hairedness is to look attractive. But it's maybe not firstly to look attractive. It's so that we absorb more vitamin D. It's a, it's a uh, secondary um, result of uh, absorbing vitamin D. So it's kind of the reason for red hair. That's what this paragraph is about. And it's very important that you understand this. If you don't, you have to read the paragraph again. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. All right. So, okay. so again, um, just repeat after me. What is this paragraph about? Um, this paragraph talk about the differentity of bones because of the lack of vitamin D. No. Repeat after me, Chani. Just the question. What is this paragraph about? Sorry, sir. Just repeat the question after me. So, word for word, repeat me verbatim. What is this paragraph about? What this paragraph is about? It is about characteristics connected to red hair. The characteristic connected to the red hair. Such as pale skin. Such as pale skin. Freckles. Freckles. But most importantly, absorbing more sunlight. But most importantly, absorbing the sunlight. To produce vitamin D. To produce vitamin D. To avoid rickets. To avoid rickets. A very dangerous disease. A very dangerous disease. 
okay that's what you have to understand if you do not understand this concept or most of these concepts from this paragraph you have to read it again okay because otherwise you will have some difficulties answering questions and you're going to spend a lot of time searching for answers and we don't want that okay all right makes sense okay okay so Chayani what I want what I want you to do if you have the chance what I want you to do do you have a study partner like do you have somebody that you can practice uh, your IELTS with sometimes yeah there is I'm yeah. kind of invite my friends in the other platform like a Facebook or Instagram but they are ready to join my, my practice because of the difficultness of reading <laughs> okay, well, it's good to find study partners. So I'm going to give a tip to everybody. Um, so, uh, of course, you can talk to each other here. So you can find, you know, partners in our live classes here and on the websites as well. There's also the uh, Discord group that we are partners with, and it's completely free. They're called IELTS Prep on Discord, and it's like 8,000 IELTS students. Um, it's IELTS prep on discord. Okay, and you can definitely find uh, people there um, It's more fun to practice reading in groups and you learn a lot from each other. Okay, so I highly 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 recommend uh, Doing not just speaking but also for example reading uh, listening writing practice in groups as well. Okay? okay All right, and Carolina in the chat saying we encourage premium users to contact each other for IELTS practice Absolutely learning in groups is fun. Okay, Chani so practice it and so what you can do is uh, read the same paragraph with your partner and then ask each other questions and talk about it like this okay okay sir all right thank you thank so much for volunteering yeah thank you sir Adrian have a great day you too bye Chayani all right there you go Chayani thank you okay uh, let's see who else is volunteering Fuang our member is volunteering. Yes, you can, Fuang. Yes, are you ready? So this is a members chat class. I'm also looking at premium students if uh, our uh, members are not volunteering, but I see lots of members volunteering, which is nice to see. Okay, um, Fuang, are you in there? You ready? Yes, cool, awesome, here we go. All right, uh, let me call you before I get ahead of myself here. Hi, Fuang. Hi, sir. How is the start to your weekend so far? Well, I'm a little bit exhausted with my final examination of my university, but uh, you know, I'm a positive person, so I'm full of energy. Okay. Do you have your marks already for those exams? No, I haven't uh, taken uh, the IELTS yet. No, I mean for, uh, oh, but uh, your school exams, right? You, that you just mentioned. Ah. Um, maybe in the next two weeks, I will um, receive my result. Okay, I bet you're going to do fantastic. You're a hardworking student. Okay, um, so here we go. Uh, I've brought up the next paragraph. Um, go ahead and read it, starting from Redheads Also Have, whenever you're ready. Okay, sir. Redheads also have a number of other curious attributes that are associated with the MC1R genes. First, they have a higher tolerance for pain than non-redheads. Studies have shown that redheads require up to 20% more anesthesia for sedation than non-redheads. Second, redheads are more sensitive to cold temperature. This is especially curious because redheads is originally developed as an adaptation for a cold poor environment. Evolution is not perfect, and it may be the case that maladaptation to cold temperature is the right redhead pay for adaptation to low level of sunlight. Third, redheads grew more easily than non-redhead. There does not seem to be any evolutionary reason for such a trait. 
though it certainly there contribute to the negative stereotype of redheads as less physically capable than non-redheads. Awesome, Fong. Good. Nice speed. I like how you kind of read through some of those tricky words. Let's practice the uh, pronunciation of those. So, anesthesia. 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 Anesthesia is um, putting someone to sleep. So when uh, we go for surgery or um, some kind of medical treatment where they have to do some tricky, difficult procedure, then they give us a needle so that we sleep through it and we don't feel the pain. It's called anesthesia. The person who does that, the special doctor, is called an anesthesiologist. Try that one, Fuang. Anesthesiologist. Anesthesia psychologist. Not a psychologist. It's just an anesthesiologist. Anesthesiologist. Very good. Anesthesiologist. Anesthesiologist. Good. Very nice. Sedation. 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 Very nice. Sedate. Sedate. Yeah, sedate is the verb. Okay. Um, sedate basically means to put to sleep. Okay. To put to sleep. Sedate. Um, okay, good. So you just read through those. That was really good for them. You didn't stop, and that's what you should do in the real test as well. You shouldn't stop for difficult to pronounce words. Okay, uh, what is this paragraph about, Fuang? Uh, well, I guess uh, this paragraph is about the, the region, uh, like the environment where the people have red hat leaves. Uh, okay. Can you give me a specific example? Mm, like a uh, Chenpur environment. Mm, or... Not quite. If you're stuck, Fong, read the topic sentence. So the topic sentence will contain the concept of the paragraph. And this is especially true for body paragraphs. So just read this very first sentence, please, again. Red hats also have a number of other curious attributes that are associated with their MC1R gene. Yeah, so if we really want it to be simple, we would say other curious attributes associated with the MC1R gene. So it's other kind of strange or interesting um, attributes, characteristics that are related to being a redhead, right? Like uh, not going to sleep as easily. So if somebody has red hair and they go to the doctor and the doctor has to perform surgery, they have to give them more drugs to make them fall asleep. That's one of the interesting characteristics. Also, they're sensitive to cold temperatures. That's another characteristics, okay? So this okay. paragraph is about these other attributes that are related. Um, one really good practice, Fong, and this is for everybody when you're at home and you're practicing for the IELTS exam and the reading, is when you read a paragraph, you can turn it into a bullet point, okay, like this. So other attributes of MC1R uh, or redhead, okay, um, are. Uh, and then, oh, getting out of control here, R. Um, and then more bullets. So, uh, for example, sensitive uh, to cold, um, resistant uh, to anesthetics. Uh, there was another one in there. Do you remember another one that it said in there? Another interesting trait? So since they're sensitive to cold, they don't go to sleep as easily with medical treatment. There was another one in there, Fuang. Do you remember what it was? It was kind of an interesting one. Okay, sir. I paid attention on YouTube. Uh, what 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 you are typing on the on the screen? Yeah. And what was another trait? So what was another another interesting? Yeah, Silviana, you're right. So Silviana says they bruise mo more easily, right? So they bruise more easily. Do you know what it means to bruise, Fuang? 
The word bruise. Do you know what that means? Pen. Uh, bruise is when you hit yourself and your skin turns blue. So if you accidentally hit your hand on the desk and then where you hit your hand, it turns blue underneath your skin. That's called a bruise in English. Okay. So it's like when you're bleeding, but the bleeding is underneath the skin. It's called a blue. It's called a bruise. Bruise. Okay. Do you want to pronounce that with me? Bruise. 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 I got a bruise after I kicked my bed this morning. It was really painful. I got a bruise when I kicked the bed in the morning, and it was painful. Okay, good. So that's how you can remember it by creating a sentence. Okay. All right, Fuang, thank you so much for reading the paragraph. Again, same advice as with Chayani. If you're not 100% sure what the paragraph was about, read the topic sentence and read the paragraph again, okay? Okay, sir. Have All a right. good day. You too. Thanks for reading, Fuang. All right, let's give Fuang a thumbs up. And uh, Sylviana, um, great answer with the bruise. Uh, you said you'd like to volunteer. Are you ready? Here we go. Got a little bit more left in the passage and then we're on to the questions. Yes, Chen, I know we've all done it. We've all kicked the bed and uh, we've all bruised ourselves, especially our toe. Ooh, when we get that bruise underneath the toenail. Ouchie, that'll remind you of the word bruise, right? Sylviana, here we go. Hi, Sylviana. How are you? I'm fine. Good. How about you? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you, Sylviana. Thanks for uh, becoming a member. You're a new member and it's lovely to have you. Can you tell us all where you're from? I'm from Tangerang City in Indonesia. In Indonesia. Awesome. And why are you doing the IELTS? Um, in the next year, I'm planning to work overseas. So. I'm taking the IELTS exam next year. Okay, so for working overseas, may I ask where you're planning to work and what you're planning to do? Um, perhaps uh, either Canada or Australia. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'm in the animation industry. I'm work at, I'm working as a 3D animator. Oh, cool. Okay, 3D animation movies. Everybody loves what you do. We all watch those movies for sure. So that's exciting. Thank you. I think uh, Carolina might uh, have special interest because Carolina is into graphics and animation oh. as well, our chat moderator. So you guys okay. might have some topics to discuss at some point. Okay, Sylviana, um, whenever you're ready, I've brought up the last couple of paragraphs. Just read them both, please. Okay. This is not the only negative stereotype that has cursed red hats through the centuries. At times, in history, red hats have been taught to be witches, evil, unclean, and soulless. Today, these stereotypes have thankfully given way to more cheery stereotypes of red hats as fun and quirky individuals. In recent years, a perception has been created that red hats are dying out and will eventually become extinct as a genetic category. This is patently false. Red hair as a recessive gene has the ability to skip generations and return in full force. Red hair has been around for thousands of years, perhaps as many as hundred and thousand years, and there are no signs of its forthcoming extinction. While red hats make, make up a shrinking percentage of the world's population due to higher growth among non-European populations and the red hats gene is here to stay. Nice. Okay. So that is absolutely fast enough for the IELTS to get a high, high band score, even a band nine. As long as a person can read um, the IELTS passage within about seven, eight minutes and have about 12 minutes for the questions, which means you have basically like a minute per question, you should be able to get a very good score. And that speed, Sylviana, is actually faster. You'll probably read the passage in about six minutes. Okay. 
What's okay. most important is that you understand it. So if you understand, let's say, 60% of the passage this way, then maybe read a little bit slower, like 10, 15% slower. Spend eight minutes reading the passage. If that helps you understand 80% of the passage, then that's better, right? Okay. Okay. So um, this uh, little short paragraph here, the first one that you read, what was that about? Mm, it's about the stereotype. Uh, Absolutely. Red hats. Mm -hmm. What's a stereotype? Uh, like people point of view. Yeah, it's a subjective point of view, right? So we come up with this kind of idea that's not really necessarily scientific, but we just kind of believe it. And then we believe that all people who have that or who do that are this way, right? And what are yeah. some of those stereotypes? Uh, it's a bad thing. Like red hats have been taught to be witches, evil, unclean, and soulless. Yeah, it's terrible. How about today? Do we still have these ideas that redheads are witches? Mm, perhaps in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Not only in the movies, right? But now, what do we think about redheads these days? Uh, I think it's mm, not in a negative anymore. Yeah, they're, we think they're kind of cheery and fun people. Absolutely. Yeah. I think there's uh, there's an animation with that girl that has really big red hair. It's called River Dance or something like that. Uh, yeah, from Disney, is it? Yeah. Brave. yeah. Brave, that's it. See, you are in animation. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so, yeah. You knew it better than me. Yeah, it's called Brave. Brave, yes, the girl with the big red hair. Um, okay, and this uh, final concluding paragraph, what is that about? It's the conclusion that uh, the red hats has the ability to skip generations. Simplify. And uh, they can they can live um, more. All right, so it sounds like you're having a bit of difficulty with it, which is absolutely okay. Um, the conclusion yeah. is sometimes a good paragraph to reread in the IELTS. There's usually one or two questions, and it's usually the last questions in the set of questions. So when you have like 13 or 14 questions, usually the last couple of questions deal with the conclusion, the concluding paragraph. And so it's a good idea to reread it, especially because it's usually a short paragraph. And in this case, if you were to reread it, you would discover that the conclusion is about this idea that redheads are disappearing in the world. But the author is saying that this is not actually the case. It's just that they're, they seem to be relatively fewer in numbers but they're not disappearing they're they've been around for a long time and they will be around for a long time so that's what it says uh -huh. okay. okay Silviana all right okay. Silviana again welcome to um, the group of members make sure to use the website often if you have questions you can ask me send me an email you can ask your um, your peers in the class as well I'm sure they'll happily answer questions for you or Carolina and uh, good studies will all help you to achieve your goals of uh, going to another country and being an awesome animator okay, okay? Okay, I'm a little bit nervous actually today <laughs> because this is my first time, but thank you, sir. Absolutely, it's very understandable. Tomorrow we'll have lots of speaking practice, so come back for that okay. as well, okay? All right, okay. bye, Silviana. Thank you. All right, lovely to have new members join in. Um, okay, so now we're going to get to some uh, questions. Do we have more members to help me out with the questions here? Uh, thumbs up, please, everybody, for Silviana. It's always a very uh, anxious time, first time volunteering. I'm sure many of our re members uh, recall the first time that you volunteered and how it was a bit, uh, bit of a nervous moment. So uh, support each other, that's great. All right. Well, I'm not sure, um, Prerna, if you are a member, you got to let me know in the chat. Uh, Maria, in the meantime, maybe can help me with some questions. Maria, are you ready? Maria is a premium student, which is nice to see. We have some other premium students in here too. That are, that's great. Uh, Domenico, uh, Jaco, um, fantastic. Uh, let's go out for Maria first. Maria, are you ready to answer some questions maybe with me? Of course, everybody wants to know, what are the questions for this passage? How do we answer them? Let's do it. Maria, yes.
Hello. Hi, Maria. How are you? I am doing all right. How are you? I'm doing fantastic because <laughs> it's my first time joining you. Oh, oh, really? Okay. And where are you joining from? I'm from Belarus. From Belarus. And you're a premium student, so you are ambitious, which is great. I'm here to help you. And why are you doing the IELTS? I will sit IELTS on the 14th of December. It's soon. And I sit the exam for um, taking my master's degree, Erasmus Mundus. Okay. Sorry, uh, I didn't catch that last bit. Master's degree for what? Uh, if you know Erasmus Mundus. Erasmus this, Mundus, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I got you now. I couldn't catch it at first because I was like, what is the what word? I thought it was a foreign word there for a second. Well, it is Latin, but <laughs> anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let me um, help you on that journey. That's awesome. Um, so let's get to the questions here. Have you been following the class from the beginning, more or less? Uh, more or less. I was. <laughs> okay. All right, then um, this is a sentence completion type question and you have to choose no more than two words from the passage. Now in the real IELTS, these should be the exact words from the passage. So for this type of question, it's good to check. But before you check, so your first step should not be to just search for it. It should be to, um, to think about the answer on your own. So we'll go to number 14 here. Whenever you're ready, read question 14 with the blank. And if you know the answer, if you think you know what should go in there, just put it in. Red hair is common in countries with from Western Europe. Mm -hmm. Now I'll give you a tip here, okay? So I'll give you a little bit of a a little bit of help here. Uh, these questions usually come in the order of the passage, so that means that the answer for this is coming from somewhere in the beginning. And I have a feeling you'll find it very quickly if you start searching, but you'll find it even faster and you'll have more confidence in your answer if you can figure out what this word is. What you wanna do is pay attention to the word that's preceding the blank and the word that's um, succeeding or coming after the blank, especially in this case, this from Western Europe. Okay, so red hair is common, something from Western Europe. Um, what makes sense? What word makes sense to put in there? Do you uh, historical immigration. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, even just the word immigration, right? Um, so very good. And now what we can, so what are those? So just that, just for fun, what are countries that have historical immigration from Western Europe? Um, as, as I remember, it's Canada as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, Canada, US, US, Australia, New Zealand right has a big mm -hmm. population coming from Western Europe from the UK from Scotland from Scandinavia absolutely and then um, in this case once you have the answer so you said historical immigration okay um, then what you want to do just to make sure that you get this point and you don't lose it for some strange reason is now you know that you can actually skim read uh, for that word okay so mm -hmm. uh, this is what's called skim reading with purpose. Okay, so you're not just randomly skim reading, but you're skim reading with purpose. So you know that you're looking specifically for this word, especially if, or words, especially if you're doing the paper-based exam and you have to get the spelling correct, it's really important to check. So you go back to uh, that part and now um, you see this sentence here. Additionally, countries with historical immigration from Western Europe, right? And then mm -hmm. you have the word here. So it's the most sure way to figure out that, okay, that's the right answer. That's the right spelling. I can put that in and then it's going to be correct. Okay. Um, now, in this case, just the word immigration would be enough. But to be sure, especially because it's two words, it's not a bad idea to put in historical immigration. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's try the next one. Number 15. Can you read that one? A gene is one which can only be transmitted from generation to generation if both parents possess it. 
Okay, this one should be fairly easy. Uh, it's short. Uh, I should put the short form of this gene or not? Careful. Think really carefully about what the right answer is here. A something gene is one which can only be transmitted from generation okay. to... It's not the specific gene for red hair. So it doesn't say this is the specific gene for red hair, which can be. This is a. So it's not the, it's a. Always pay attention to the word that comes before and after. So a means it's one of many. So it's a common noun, right? Mm -hmm. So what's the word here? Try not to look at the chat because I'm sure a lot of people are trying to give you the answer right now. I but... think it's recessive. Yeah, exactly. How do you spell it? R E S S C E double S I V E. Yeah, it's R E C E S S I V E. So recessive, right? And again, you can check that, right? Now, <clears throat> let's see that you made that mistake that you did at the beginning, which was the MC1R. And you're right, you could do the uh, acronym for um, the MC1R. It would be a wrong answer in this case. So that would be a wrong mm -hmm. answer, right? Um, the way that you can figure out, and somebody with your level of English, with your speed, okay, it's all about using correct strategy to make sure that you're not missing any marks. The trick is to read the question, okay, uh, with the answer. So just read it with the MC1R from A. Uh. So A, uh, and then read it with the MC1R, and then you'll see that it's wrong. Try it. Um, a recessive? No, I'm sorry, I, sh I should be clear. So I mean like reading it like this, like a MC1R gene is one which can only be transmitted from generation to generation. Hopefully when you read it like that with the answer together, you realize like that sounds strange. That doesn't seem right. And then when you figure out the right answer, a recessive gene is one which can only be transmitted. Then you're like, okay, that sounds correct. Do you see what I'm trying to show you here? Yeah, that's awkward when I try to read it in my head, yeah. You see, right? So a very important tip, and this is for everybody, is with these short answer questions, once you think you have the answer, it, one extra step, so one more step before you go to the next question, is just quickly read it. Read the sentence with your answer. Because if it sounds really awkward or strange, you've probably made a mistake and you have to rethink it. Okay, now if you're having troubles, leave the question with the wrong answer, maybe pull a line through it. And then when you have more time at the end of your passage, so let's say you have one minute left, you've given all the other answers, then you go back to that one and see if you can figure out what is the right answer. Do you see what I'm saying mm -hmm. with this? Okay, so that's the right strategy for this. Um, let's try number 16. Evolution and are both causes of the origin of red hair. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember it. Okay, fine. So you don't remember it. Okay, no worries. Uh, my goal here with you, Maria, and this is for everybody, is I'm showing you different strategies and tips that you can rely on during your IELTS exam. So what would you do in this case, Maria, in your IELTS exam? So you're like, okay, I don't remember what this is. I have to go and look for it. Um, what would you do? Look at the text, skim. Yeah, yeah. and what would you skim answer. for? Mm, for the word. Which word? Mm. Evolution and... Evolution. So I would skim specifically for evolution because it's a unique word, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, where would you skim for it? Mm. In the middle, I think, of the text. Yeah, exactly. So somewhere in the second third of the text, right? So let's go back mm -hmm. kind of to the second third of the text. I would probably start somewhere at the start of the third paragraph, maybe, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's um, let's do that. So can you find the word evolution? Yeah, evolution and geography. Okay, where do you see it? It's fifth, I think, uh, line. Okay, 
Um, evolution so, and geography. Yep, yeah, skin and butt. People are what the answer some scientists think is evolution and geography. Right there, right? Oops, a little yeah. bit too much. Evolution and geography. Right there. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So. Um, the important point I'm trying to show everybody here is mindless skim reading wastes a lot of time. A lot of people, um, they say, oh, 20 minutes is not enough for these passages. And it's because they're not using the right strategies. It's because they tend to, for example, start skim reading from the very beginning, or they don't know what word they're actually uh, uh, skim reading for. Now, skim reading, you have to be careful with. You should only be skim reading for maximum 30 to 40% of the answers. About 60 to 70% of the answers if you want to get that band seven, eight, nine, um, you should answer without skim reading. So here the answer, of course, is geography, right? Right. Okay. Um, all right, let's do number 17. Are you ready? Go ahead and read that. Yes. In addition to red hair, the MC1R gene causes many to occur on the skin. Okay, now if you know this word in English, you can get it right away. If you don't, you're going to have to check for it. What's the mm. word? It's all those little specks. Some people think they're very cute when we have them, especially on our cheeks. Those little dots. Do you know what those are called, Maria? Mm. We get them usually on our nose and on our and on our cheeks. Some people have them all over their face, but uh, some people just have them on their cheeks and on their nose. I know, but I forgot a word in English. I know it's in Russian, but in English I forgot. Because Russian people it's... have them too, right? So people have like freckles, freckles. Uh, freck, uh, freckles. Freckles. Yeah, like that, freckles. Yeah, a few people in the chat got it, freckles. So they have freckles. Okay, um, when you, whenever you come across a new word, Maria, immediately put it um, into a sentence, okay? So you can put it into a sentence like, my best friend has freckles all over her nose and cheeks, and I think it's just so cute. Try it. Try the sentence. Yeah, just copy the sentence that I just okay. said. My best friend has freckles uh -huh. all over her cheeks and nose, and I think it's just so cute. My friend has freckles all over her cheeks, and it and it's cute. Yeah, yeah. So you visualize it, you include yourself, you make it an interesting sentence, and then you'll remember it, right? So anytime you come across a new word, immediately put it into a sentence, say it, make it unique, make it personal, make it fun, make it emotional, and then you will remember it forever, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. okay, Maria, so lots of tips there for you and for everybody else doing the reading for those types of questions. Keep studying, keep coming back to these live classes. You've got a little bit of time till you have your exam. Okay, so mm -hmm. lots of study, all right? Okay, thank um, you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, Maria, by the way, um, especially because your exam is so close, uh, yeah. just a suggestion, um, You, I would recommend that you book one of these speaking interview practice sessions with me. It does cost a bit of money, but it might be a good idea uh, coming up to your um, speaking exam so soon, okay? Just a okay. thought, no pressure, all right? Okay, I will sleep on it. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, we'll talk again soon in class. Okay, bye, Maria. Thanks for volunteering. Okay, bye. All right. Oops. Sorry, Maria, that was me. Um, so, um, yeah, um, students, uh, always practice new words. Put them into sentences, okay? Uh, Domenico, nice to have you volunteering. Also one of our members and premium students. Are you uh, ready? Domenico will be actually the perfect candidate for the true, false, not given questions here because Domenico says, I came late to class, but even though I would like to join, and that's fantastic. You're going to see why. I'm going to do a fun experiment here with Domenico. Hello. Hello. Hi, Domenico. How are you? I'm, I'm great. And how about you? 
I'm doing pretty good. Um, Domenico, so you came late to class, so you didn't have a chance to read this passage, yeah, I didn't right? get to read it. Yeah, I didn't get uh, the chance to read the passage, so I just want to have a go. Okay, you know what? That's great, um, because this next question that we're looking at is the yes, no, not given, which is kind of like the true, false, not given kind of question, yeah. right? These are my favorite question types. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, and um, the reason why it's actually interesting that you did not read the passage is because these questions, a lot of them, you can actually figure out using really good logic, okay? Yeah. So it's yeah, almost you like have to put, you have to put your critical thinking skills into action. Absolutely. And you might not even need to read some of the passage for this. Yeah. Um, so let me show you what I mean. And I think you've done these with me before. So you have an idea. So can you read number 18 for me, please? Ex excess sunshine causes uh, rickets. Okay. Mm. So rickets is a type of disease, right? Excess sunshine, uh, what does that mean, excess sunshine? So uh, if you are exposed to the sun too much time, it can cause uh, it can cause you to suffer from this disease. Okay, good. So um, here's the first question that we need to ask, okay? When we see these yes, no, not given, or true, false, not given questions, first we want to figure out if it's given or if it's not given. That's our first step, right? Because if it's not given, then we just move on. We don't worry about true or false or yes or no. So uh, the first question that we ask is, is it important? So just ask ask the audience or ask us, is it important to understand this question about sunshine and rickets? Well, rickets, uh, <clears throat> in my humble opinion, it's important to understand uh, what uh, the disease the rickets disease is all about. Uh, so excess yeah. sunshine, yeah, excess sunshine uh, can cope can cause the rigors. So okay, let's slow down, let's slow down, Domenico. So you're saying it's important because um, from what you've been following, this uh, red hair, having red hair, mm -hmm. is connected yeah. somehow to sunshine, right? So yeah, Exactly. So, yeah, so obviously it, it has to do not so much with having red hair, but protecting the human from this disease, from this rickets. So it's important, right? So we know it's important, yeah. okay? So we know it's important, so we know that it must be given. Okay, so when we know it's important, we know it's given, now we have to figure out if it's true or if it's false. Or yes or no in this case, right? Okay, um, so now we look at the question carefully again. So too much sunshine. Is it true that if we get too much sunshine, we're going to get this disease called rickets? Well, uh, I would say, yeah, uh, too much exposure, exposure to, the, to the sunshine can cause this uh, disease. Yes, it's true. I disagree with you, Domenico. I, I have I to disagree. Remember. There's something else that happens if we get too much sunshine. What happens if we get too much sunshine? What can we get? We get the burn. We get sunburn, right? So, but it doesn't say yeah, sunburn. sunburn. It doesn't say causes sunburn. sunburn. It says causes rickets. Yeah. What does too much? Uh, what does too much sunburn? If we get too much sunburn, what can happen? What kind of disease can we get? Uh, well, when you get when you get a a sunstroke, a sunstroke, a kind of stroke. Yeah, you can get sunstroke from too much sun or heat yeah. from sun, but yeah. it says rickets. It doesn't say sunburn. It doesn't say sunstroke. And if we get too much sunburn all the time, we can even develop skin cancer, right? Yeah, skin can uh, that kinds of uh, spots on your on your exactly. skin. Exactly, uh, but it doesn't yeah. say that, right? So rickets is something different, right? Rickets is not skin cancer. Right, rickets get, is not yeah. sunburn. It's none of these, right? Rickets is something different, and it doesn't happen from too much sunshine. It happens from not enough sunshine, right? So not yeah. enough vitamin D. Uh, so in this case, the answer it is... is it's, it's a false. Yeah. yeah, it's no, false. absolutely. False or no, but don't put false. false. Put yeah, no, got, no. yeah, it goes by genetic... Uh, yeah, genetic factor, uh, factors. Yeah, it makes your bones like it. It's it's actually a very harsh disease. It makes the bones all bend and go out I of shape. I kind of I kind of remember uh, I kind of remember something uh, that I studied at the university. So you know, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all kind of remember. We remember these things, Domenico. Okay. Um, so again, even if you're not 100% sure, and this is for everybody. So Domenico, I'm saying this to you, but I'm saying it to everybody else. If you're not 100% mm-hmm. sure about what the passage had in it, um, yes, no, not given questions, you can actually do with a lot of critical thinking, as you said, Domenico. Mm-hmm. So you read the question, you figure out, okay, it's given. When you figure out that it's given, you're halfway there. Then you try to figure out if it's true or false. And you have to pay really careful attention. Um, IELTS often has this, Dominica, where they give you the opposite. Mm. Like they say excessive sunshine. They purposefully kind of trick you with this opposite concept, causes mm-hmm. rickets. And then you have to realize that, oh, no, it's not excessive. It's too little sunshine. So not having enough vitamin D causes uh, rickets yeah. because vitamin D is very important for bone development. So uh, that's why. Um, All right, Domenico, thank you for helping me start off this uh, True False Not Given. I appreciate that. You're welcome. You're welcome, Adrian. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Bye, Domenico. Have an awesome rest of the day. Bye. All right, that was Domenico. Give Domenico a thumbs up. He's uh, over there in Sicily in Europe. Absolutely. Um, All right, everybody. So um, the yes, no, not given, right? That's how you do it. True, false, not given. That's how you do it. Um, let's uh, let's take a look at this one together. Okay, so let's answer these ones in the chat. We're starting to run a little bit short on time. High amounts of eumelanin is known to help absorb vitamin D. Important. The amounts of eumelanin. Is it important, students? Answer these quickly. Let's speed up now a little bit. <clears throat> is it important? Amounts of eumelanin absorbing vitamin D. Raquea says, yes. I like the support for Domenico. That's good. Silviana, thank you. Um, Raquea, I, <clears throat> I agree with you. It is. Yeah. Yes. So it's given, right? Should be. We saw that word in there somebody somewhere. Is it true that high amounts of eumelanin is known to absorb help vitamin D? Um. Mm, I don't know. So I check. This is where I search for the word eumelanin. Okay. So I go, okay, well, maybe, right? That's one of the situations where students are like, well, Adrian, what if the answer is maybe? Like, I don't I don't really know, right? So here, remember, 30 to 40%, if you're looking for, it's fine. Uh, so here's the word eumelanin. I just found it. Okay, it's a very unique looking word, so I was able to skim, read, and check for it pretty quick. Okay, uh, then I go and read the previous sentence, previous sentence. One of the side effects of MC1R gene is that redheads more easily absorb vitamin D due to low amounts of eumelanin. You, I can't pronounce it. Eumelanin in their bodies. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so... Easily absorb vitamin D due to low amounts of eumelanin. So here, it's a tricky one. Um, High amounts of eumelanin is known to help absorb vitamin D. It's important, but the answer is no. That's right, Amra. Very good. The answer is no. Okay, so the first two are no and no. Uh, redheads have difficulty adapting to their environment. Important. Hopefully all of you get this pretty quick. Um, is it important for the author to talk about the adaptation of redheads to their environment? Or their, their difficulties? No. No. It's not given. It doesn't say anywhere. So this is where you can think about what the author would write. It doesn't say anywhere that that redheads have been known to have difficulties adapting to their environment. So it took millions of years for them to develop the MC1R gene. It didn't say that anywhere, right? It doesn't, the author doesn't discuss, it would be strange and unknown. So anytime you have strange, unknown facts, (laughs) 
it is very likely on not given. Okay, all right. Um, redheads are less physically capable than non-redheads. Is it true? No. Is it false? Mm, I don't think so. I don't know. Um, this is again one I might check. There were those weird um, stereotypes, right? Uh, there does not seem to be an evolutionary reason for such a trait, though it certainly does contribute to the negative stereotypes of redheads as less physically capable than non-redheads. It's a negative stereotype, but it's not true, okay? So again, this one could be false, could not be false. We don't know. The author doesn't give us this answer. It says it's a negative stereotype, but we don't know if it's true or not. So it's not a no, it's not given. The author doesn't say they are or they aren't. It just says that it's a stereotype, right? We don't know. You can only go off of the passage. So the answers here are no, no, not given, not given. It's not given because it's a negative stereotype, which means that it's, it's not a good thing. You shouldn't say that about people with red hair, but the author doesn't actually say they are more physically capable or they're not more physically capable. Okay, so it's not given. Um, for an answer to be given, it has to be explicit. The author has to say, redheads are not as physically capable as people with other hair colors. Or it has to say, redheads are physically just as capable as people with any other hair color. In this case, they say it's a stereotype, but they don't say if it's true or not. I know it's kind of a tricky one, but... The best answer is not given. And you're always looking for the best answer. All right, uh, members, um, keep going. Uh, answer these questions. Redhead misconceptions. I'll leave this one for homework for you, okay? Because we're out of time. And because it's good to do a bit of homework. So this I'll leave for homework. Check the passage again, read it again. If you have questions, you can always send an email. Uh, and uh, make sure to hang around for the next class, uh, which will be listening. Again, we're going to use our website. So for all of our viewers, I highly recommend joining. Click that big red button at aehelp.com. Also that big red button at giltshelp.com. Thank you to all of our uh, new brave volunteers and members in this class. That was fantastic, uh, Maria and Silviana. And thank you to everybody else who volunteered. We had lots of people speaking in this class. That was lovely. Um, so I will be back in 30 minutes uh, with uh, listening part one and part two practice. Until then, check out the websites aehelp.com for academic IELTS, giltshelp.com for general IELTS. We've got all the materials and help there for you. These are the support materials textbooks for these live classes. Thank you, Carolina, for moderating and giving suggestions and advice. That's much appreciated. I hope to see you all back here in 30 short minutes. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from uh, beautiful Victoria for now, and I will be back shortly. Bye.